Hello, everyone. This is Miriam Haugen. I am part of the Creativity Hive team. Today, we have a really wonderful guest, Roland Kallenberg. We are going to be looking at a really wonderful and empowering way to help us produce high quality, 100% on brand content at speed and scale with automation options. And I we all loved automation. At least we should love automation because that's what speeds things up and makes our life better. Um, so Colin is going to be talking about how he uses vi Adobe video apps to develop adaptive and responsive motion graphic solutions. So a little bit about Roland before I bring him on the screen. He received his first After Effects expert certification in 2002. 2002. So he's been doing this for a long time. He's also a certified trainer with Boris FX Mocha. He has thousands of classroom hours at the universities and colleges and has done much training of fellow professionals. Uh, he is one of the original Creative Cal After Effects forum leaders, spent 14 years there and has also been an Adobe community experts in their After Effects forum. Uh, so, over 20 years of experience creating and developing motion graphics templates, and he develops intelligently functional mogurts to help make the universe a better place, place. Love it. All right. And here is Roland. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm seeing, um, but can you see the um, After Effects? I have not brought the After Effects. I will bring the After Effects screen on so you can get mm -hmm. right into it. I just want to say, though, I have uh, Roland's website on there. It would be awesome if everybody checked that out. Okay. All right. So we're looking at the screen right now. Um, it says Motion Graphics Design System. Yes. All righty. Okay, how many minutes are we? We're four minutes in. Um, how many <laughs> people do we have on? Well, <laughs> is anyone there? Is anyone out there? I see. Well, I see. Uh, actually, here we go. Hmm? Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> We do it's have some people chat. watching live because we were really want to do this giveaway and we want to make sure we have plenty of people watching. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Should I start or should we wait a couple of minutes for I, well, I don't know. Tell us, okay, so you okay, tell us a little bit about your background. We could do that. Oh gosh, I hate it. <laughs> I, I told you, you did a, a very good intro. I yes, good intro. I hit the high points. Yeah. So anyways, point. anyways, anyways. Um, all right. So today we're talking about adaptive and responsive motion graphics and why they're useful to be used as part of a design system. All right. Up to today, a lot of times when, when well, not a lot of times, almost 99.9% .9 of the time when we hear about design systems, people are talking about web design or mobile app design and very, very little about motion graphics being part of a design system. So today will be my little part to try and um, change that and hopefully I can get more uh, people on board. Yeah, I am excited to hear this. And of course, yeah, we will have people watching this in the replay too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. So I think um, I shall get going. Yes. All right. So over here, um, I've got my presentation slide. And we're talking about motion graphics design systems and motion for brand identity. So first bullet point. It works. All right. Okay, so everyone at home, uh, got to be a little bit patient because there's a bit of lag with the um, StreamYard recording. So anyway, so first bullet point, what is responsive motion graphics? It's something new for some people. And what it is is essentially 
how properties or elements respond to changes within a related property or element. It's also been called auto resizing or self resizing. So a quick demo is if you look at this guy here, the highlight and the text change, as I bring this graphic away, it responds accordingly. And if I bring it close enough, it's responsive features kick in and you get the highlight and of course these tags and stuff like these all these things appear so far so good yes okay so and what good about responsive motion graphics is that it's modular as you see if i drag this down it applies to any other bullet points that i may have on screen which I have done some coding in After Effects because to make something adaptive or responsive, you need to code in After Effects. Now, it's also consistent in terms of the results that it provides. It's repeatable, it's scalable. I can create more slides and have the same features built into it very easily. And I can also automate it if I wanted to by hooking up the text to a spreadsheet. So each time I want to create a new slide, instead of typing in each and every word here, I could do the typing in in a spreadsheet on Google Sheets or Excel, bring that sheet in and all the bullet points here and also the details for each bullet point will be updated. I'm going to show you another example for responsive. So the slide title is up here. If I change the name, as you can see, the line changes in length and the text below also changes to adapt or sorry, to respond to the change in the um, length of the text. Did you see that? Yes. All right. I'm going to slip it back in and it's going to invoking its responsive nature and we get everything back together again so it's responsive is beautiful because it's like a live link between the different elements so that's pretty straightforward i think next we'll look at adaptive this one's a bit newer in terms of, of how many people know about this or have seen it in action and it's essentially the same there's some responsiveness happening but it is very specific to how properties elements respond and very specific to a change in the frame size. Okay, and it is not auto resizing, not self resizing as how we used to know it. Although there is a bit of auto resizing and self resizing happening, but it happens only because of a change in frame size. I'm gonna switch screens now. Okay, can you see some Japanese text here, Miriam? Let me see. Yes. All right. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a little MOGAT. This is our essential graphics panel, which houses our MOGAT properties. And this is our composition in After Effects or our canvas. So what's happening here is we have an adaptive MOGAT. This MOGAT is also known as MOMO MOGAT or something I've called a mother MOGAT. Within the single MOGAT, it contains different other MOGATs, all different sizes. You see that? Yeah. So each time I pick a different frame size, it's actually loading up a different MOGAT. I'm going to drag my timeline here. So you can see what's happening. If you're familiar with After Effects, you will notice that these are nested compositions. All right, each nested composition pertains to a very specific frame size corresponding to the frame sizes specified here under the frame size drop menu. Make sense? Yes. 
Okay. So within this mortgage, I can pick and choose the resolution that I want. So in that sense, it's adaptive. It adapts. The content actually adapts to the frame size. And I'll show you. You'll be wondering, oh, not really, but hang on. Now, I can also change languages. The way I set this up is actually reading contents from a spreadsheet. So I can, because these days lots of companies um, do business all over the world. So it's pretty useful, if not important, to communicate with them and their native languages. So using different frame sizes, different language from the drop down menu, it's picking up different text from there. And for displaying awesome. it. Yep. Um, let me switch to 4K. All right. Now, what's beautiful about this, what makes it adaptive is that everything here, all the different compositions, they're all actually getting information from one composition, and that's the HD 1080 composition. Right? Now, if I come up here, and, um, oh, Neil's not here. Neil is going to be joining us, but yeah, okay. go ahead. Well, I'm going to remove his name. And look at that. You know what? I'm going to put my name because you look lonely. I'll join you for oh, sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got company. Yes. So it's adaptive, but it's also got some responsive features built in. And as you can see, I made the change here. And while I'm in 4K, correct? Right. I'm going to switch to HD 1080. And you'll see that the change also transported or translated itself there. But actually, the HD 1080 composition is feeding information from here and also from the HD 1080 composition. Make sense? Right. OK. <laughs> I just wanted to point out, uh, Imran was was asking about what a Mugat was, and what? So maybe we should make okay. Mogart, M O G R T, is right. uh, what we want to make. Right. Sure Mogart is so short for what we're talking about. Yeah, Mogart is short for Motion Graphics Template, and it's been with us. Um, it's it's a proprietary Adobe file format, so it only works with Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere. It's been with us for about seven years i think and you can create mogets within after effects and even premiere pro but within after effects you get you get a lot of um uh, possibilities because you have access to the after effects um, expressions language and also javascript and you can hook up database files um, google sheets and things like that so what you're looking at here is a moget all right so the purpose of a mogut is to help us streamline and speed up workflow. I just want to say Maybe. thank you, Kruthi, for helping us with, <laughs> with comments and answering questions there in the comments. That's well, awesome. Someone's... <laughs> do we, when do we want to do some giveaways, by the way? I don't want to like interrupt you too much, but do you have a do you have a logical mm. break when we're gonna do a giveaway our first giveaway? Um, the one that says the latest gets surprised. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You have to stay. <laughs> Three hours. No, I'm kidding. I'm here right. to cycle much later because I haven't gotten to the juicy parts yet. Okay. Okay. Let's get to and the juicy lots of, part. of nice, interesting stuff. So what we've looked at so far is, is well, we've seen responsive and it's pretty easy. Adaptive, I want to make sure people really understand because adaptive is, is, is very, very... I've been doing it for about three years. Um, I know a few other people who have done it, um, but I am quite certain for a lot of people who are watching this, this is the first time that they're seeing adaptive MOGA or adaptive features or adaptive motion graphics in action. And the beauty of this is that you develop, you create it once, and you get to output it in different frame sizes. All right, we bought right. that. You have to recreate it each time. Yeah. So let's yeah. say if you created an HD 1080 and then you wanted something in um uh, for Instagram and and you wanted five by four, which is 
1350 by 1080, you have to go and recreate it on its own. The beauty with adaptive features is that you create it once, create it once, um, and it gets updated. So this is my timeline. Uh, this is the CSV. You don't need a CSV. CSV is a common separated value file. It's a spreadsheet or a data set file. So it's a file, um, spreadsheet file that contains um, data. Data could be text in our purpose or the text is this guy here. Okay. Right. And I've made the text in Google Sheet and it's got auto translations and whatnot. And from there, um, I did some coding in After Effects to link the different languages to a drop down menu. So if I'm outputting to my friends or to my customers in Vietnam, there it goes. If I wanted 4K, I just switch to 4K resolution. Of course, I must be in my adaptive mogul uh, composition. And let's say for this specific ad or video, I want this text to be lower. Right now, maybe 700. Right now, if I switch to HD 1080, you will see that that's where it's at. It has also shifted. So although I made the change while I was in 4K, because everything's hooked up together like one happy family. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Mama yeah. Morgan. Right, so everything works happily. And you can also build intelligence and things like that into your mortgage. Um, the reason why a lot of people, a lot of clients do not know about features such as this is they don't see enough of it. And also they figure, ah, you know, it's 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 very basic, very simple features, but not really. As you can see here, uh, with a single mortgage, we've got six output resolutions and we could do a lot more for sure. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to interrupt you here because Imran has a has a question. I don't know if it's appropriate for you to answer it right now, but mm -hmm. he wants to know where he can find motion um, graphic t templates outside of After Effects to use in his projects. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? A little bit. Um... I mean, different different softwares will have different uh, templates. Mogets are proprietary again to uh, to Adobe, right? So you would use After Effects and Premiere Pro, right? Um, but he can if he's using another software, then then he would like, if he's using DaVinci or or Avid, then he would have to get it from from those guys or those developers. Um, for After Effects, he has to go to Adobe Stock and there's some other sites. Uh, and I've got my own little shop on Gumroad uh, where I sell and also give away uh, mortgages. Right? Yes. Makes sense? Makes it. Well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> All right. So, so, yes. And if you want to know more about what he, uh, about his products that he sells, it's gems.com. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, a, a lot of customers, clients, um, they don't know about all the fancy features you can build in so that motion graphics can be part of a design system. And that's what I want to impress upon today um, because we're going to be able to create new jobs for, for After Effects artists, uh, new job roles, and and director of design will one day be for someone who uses After Effects. Right now, if you talk about director of design, whoever's in charge of a design system, they're not an After Effects user. There's some Photoshop guy, Illustrator guy, blah, blah, blah. But I think in terms of, of expertise, um, if you went smart, um, After Effects users are some of the brightest and most talented people out there. And I think uh, we as After Effects users, we should help each other, um, open up job opportunities. and. Um, yeah, so being part of a design system will, will be something very nice for After Effects users. So anyway, so back to this, some intelligence. As you can see, this little, little, little text here, it's intelligent enough to 
resize, rescale, reposition, whatnot. And these are not static yet. So I didn't render. I'm just going to scrub the timeline. So, uh oh, sorry, wrong timeline. <laughs> this one. Yeah. Okay, so it's animated. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saving time um, from the preview renders and stuff like that. And even the stuff up here. So if you are a brand and you want some templates or to be part of your toolkit and then eventually part of your design system and you're afraid, oh, shit, you know, um, I need to send to the video editor. They're not designers. Well, leave it up to us. After Effects people, we'll work with your brand owners and your designers and we'll make sure everything works and looks beautiful. So in this case, the editor may not have or doesn't have to type anything. Right, but the design will be consistent, and which is which is what um, brand owners want. And we're assuming they are happy with the animation also. Right, so you can scale if you want. Very easy, and it's intelligent enough. If it's in the bottom left quadrant, it will scale and leave the anchor here at the bottom left. If it was further up. We need yeah. to say hi, hi to Neil, though. Hello, Neil. Hello. Finally got the tech operating here. Good. Okay, I need to stick your name in. There you go. <laughs> and if we were up here and we scale, the anchor will be at the top right here. So what I'm trying to show is, is that other than making it adaptive, and with all these nice responsive features built in, you can build other nice intelligent um, features. I'm going to show you um, text highlights. You can type literal text. But of course, this is in Vietnamese, so it doesn't help. I cannot be, <laughs> I don't read Vietnamese. So you can search or select based on character. And if I wanted the third to six characters to be highlighted, I just do that. And as you can see, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth characters are highlighted. There's, there are no options for changing colors, font, and things like that, because this is an example of, of me developing something for a brand, and the brand will, does not want um, colors to change, brand colors to change. They do not want the um, font to change. And to a certain extent, sometimes also the size of the um, font or typeface, yeah? And sometimes there, you can build in features to allow you to type in the text also. There's a really great conversation going on in the comments on LinkedIn uh, uh, mm, talking about up? coding. Oh, yeah. Well, I just use, I code my own templates. And and uh, I love Imran's comment here. What if someone's not good at coding? <laughs> That's where. Then you buy templates. You buy templates and you hire someone yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, or if you're using After Effects, you don't have to know coding, right? You just have to know how to use After Effects, right? Yeah. But to develop adaptive, responsive features, um, coding will be quite necessary. I'll show you shortly the codes, uh, the coding okay. that's involved. So back here, back here, um, back here, what's happening? Oh. You can also type in your own text. Again, all these are features which which you can build. You can build into the mogul. It's all up to you. You decide with your client what kind of features you want. Okay. Oops. It looks small because my screen size or my frame size is at four K, right? But if I jump to um, my HD 1080 by 1080 composition. You can see it's been updated there also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you guys um, appreciate it. It's, it's like plenty magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, After Effects is doing an auto save. Sorry, I, I should have disabled the auto save. Come on. It's a huge file. <laughs>
There you go. Alrighty. Okay. 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 What else did I want to show here? Oh. So I don't want automated text. Um, sorry. I'm. This is now. It's taking the text not from my spreadsheet because it's been disabled. It's been off. So it's taking the text directly from here. But I'm gonna enable the code to grab in the text from the spreadsheet and it's grabbing the Vietnamese text now. And if you're wondering what the text says, it says today is a wonderful day for After Effects. Is it true? <laughs> now you can change spreadsheets also. So I've got this spreadsheet is on my timeline. I'm going to replace it with a spreadsheet here in my project panel. And Hourglass pops up. It's doing the, the exchange, updating. And there you go. So this is a new spreadsheet now. It's reading from a new spreadsheet. And as you can see, if you're concerned about branding, things looking consistent, uh, there you go. All right, so everything updates um, pretty quick. Korean, yeah. Is more with us yet? No? Okay, so more's out. I'm in. Cool. Um, do, we have, <laughs> do we have any questions? Oh, we've been, well, I think I've been putting them in there. There's a uh, quite a bit, but okay, yeah, let's just ask. Any questions for Roland, guys? Type them in the comments. <coughs> I'll, I'll see it. <laughs> so we've had some conversations going on, uh, oh. particularly in in the comments. And okay. I asked the, uh, I went ahead, the what if someone's not good at coding? Um, and so anyway, there's some, yeah, some other, I use coding yeah. like loop out. All right. My, does okay I'm, I'm going to show you guys what's happening with uh let's look at the typical so if there are any questions for for roland yeah it's okay come let's 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 continue because wow we're almost half an hour in so this is another um adaptive and responsive morgan okay so here's a question any useful resources to learn um coding in AE. Oh, come learn for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, is this a lead in to, to check yeah. out the website? Well, yeah, I'll be running a course on, on, on how to develop um, responsive and adaptive motion graphics. And of course, coding will be a huge part on it. Um, yeah. There are, there are places to learn um, coding, but the way I'm, uh, I code and stuff like that. It's it's very very different. And if you look at the features in here, um, it's quite in there. But I wouldn't say it's very difficult. Um, if I can do it, I can certainly teach someone else to do it. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys um, the expressions or the codes that are uh, required or used to develop something like this. All right. I'm going to come up. I'm going to hit E E so we can look at the expressions. So we've got about 20 odd layers and each of these items here each of the text here that you see is a little line of code some are longer than others some are shorter of course but as you can see there are about 80 expressions required to develop an adaptive and responsive MOGET like this. Now, the beauty of this is that it's just one MOGET and it can do all these wonderful things. Yeah, across different frame sizes. Mm, need to be here. So I'm gonna to switch to 4K. And uh, this one has built-in auto positioning. This can be used as a lower third. You can go lower center, you can go lower right. And of course, if you 
update it. Let's see, change the name up here. Responsive nature kicks in and everything updates and all across the different frame sizes. Now I've seen some mortgages from which are not adaptive and have zero responsive features from very, very big banks and global companies and they're bloody horrid, very, very poorly done. Okay design, but no responsive features, no adaptive features. So what you get is an After Effects project file with like 30, 40, maybe even 50 different compositions. And if you want one specific thing, you got to look for it. And then if you're going to output to 4K or for Instagram or something, you need to change everything, change the tags, um, adjust the sizes and things like that. And it's very, very cumbersome. And then you send it out to your editor. But with something like this, all you need to do, send this one mogut out to an editor. He or she doesn't need to know designing. And then the editor just picks which size they want. And let's say it's lower third. Let's go 4K. And let's say, Neil, I'm boring your name. Excuse me. As you can see, everything readjusts. And you're not an artificial. It's a, whoa. And our color is. And everything's ready to render. Alrighty. I'm just going to come back here and some of the quotes are pretty interesting. Some are pretty long. Yeah, some are pretty long. Um, so to be able to code in something, to develop something like this, it's it's not for someone new. Ideally, you need to do or need to have some experience coding in After Effects. Not very high level, but in, if you join us, I'll take you to such an extent where you can develop this also. Oh, if you want to take a course or you want to inquire about the course, um, drop a message on LinkedIn on my page and then we'll take it from there. It's 11.34. I've still got a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, keep going. I, yeah. Okay, but we should, but I'm wondering, are we going to wait? <laughs> are we going to wait till the end to do giveaways? Or are we going to do a giveaway in the middle? I think the end. Just, just let uh -oh. me go a little bit okay. more for this one. You have, this to, one. you have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this moment, as you can see, same design. Again, for branding purposes, all brands, they want consistency. Because consistency in design, consistency in how the brand looks. Um, gives the customers a sense of trust. Yeah? Okay, here's and, a question. How's the playback performance for this Mogurt in Premiere? Very good. Very good. Um, I will, well, I intend to jump to Premiere um, shortly after this. All right. So just bear with me. Mm. You know what? I should close some of these, yeah? Bring this here. So this is the same design, but this one's more for paragraph text just in case uh, part of the video they want to showcase something or if it's an e-commerce video or it's a com it's a video related to marketing and they want to put some photographs or they have more text they have some photographs here um, they've got some pricing information well essentially anytime they need more text on screen then this would be uh, the template that they would use Okay. And if you look at this, it's got something called an, an offering in copywriting speak. Um, you've got either a letter, or in this case, it's a little um, full stop that's stuck out there. And what I'm trying to showcase is that we as developers here in After Effects trying to develop systems or trying to develop solutions which can be used within design systems 
we need to build in a lot of nice features. In this case, I've got something um, in the real world. If there's an orphan, a lot of times the copywriter will tell the designer, hey, I need you to change the tracking such that you don't have a single word that's stuck at the bottom here. So just by adjusting or building in tracking features, the editor can now get rid of the um, often issue here. And if you wanted to add more um, design options for the editor, you can add in a font size thingy here. And while I'm changing this font size for the headline, this guy here is also keeping itself aligned to the shape of this headline. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And of course, you can go center, you can go right, just lower, lower third right. And um, of course, um, change the text. Now, all this can be done in, in Premiere, obviously. Okay, and then if I go to HG10, well, you've seen this already. All right, I change it in one, I go to another composition. I'm essentially looking at the HG 1080 composition now, right? I made the change while I was in 4K, but as soon as I jump here, you see it there. If I go to a different size one, same answer. If I go to a different position, now it's OTS is short for over the shoulder. So this over the shoulder left. So that's the outline for uh, 1080 by 135. Oh, sorry, no, this, this one. And that's where it's sitting right now. Okay, so I'm going to jump to Premiere since we have a question, and then I'm going to end at Premiere. Um, someone asked about performance. Okay, this is me in Premiere. Um, all right, this, this isn't hooked up to a spreadsheet. Sorry, um, Miriam, can you see that I'm in Premiere or Neil? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, but I, you, am, I'm supposed to be in Premiere now. Are you seeing Premiere? Is this Premiere, Neil? You are muted for some reason. Yeah, it, it's 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 Premiere. Okay, Alrighty. good. Okay. okay, so this is Morgan in Premiere, and I don't know if you noticed, I just changed the text. As you can see, the performance is... Um, my spelling's not so great. <laughs> you see, it's like, almost like real time, correct? And also look at the text here, the, this, this, this resizing feature, it also works. Um, let's see up here, uh, no more 50%, we want 80%, why not, right? Because it's not our store. So, um, and that updated pretty quickly. And even these guys here, they're, they're pretty okay. So when was the last time we had a client come in and change the dates and stuff like that? So you say, oh, no, it's not 2023, 20. it's only for this year. So you say, okay, fine. Let's take up 2024, boom, it updates there. All right. And notice the line also resizes, it's it's responsive. And the client says, no, the 2023 20, has to be below. You see the lines and everything just changes automatically. This is quite beautiful. And, and again, the consistency, performance is great, as you can see. to play it back here it's not gonna be real time for sure Again, this is adaptive, right? This is adaptive, and um, I've in this case I've left the 
spreadsheet here and you can actually make changes here. So as part of development, when you're still developing the different, different templates that will form the toolkit that's going to be under the brand system or design system umbrella, you can add this, your spreadsheet, which was used to drive all the different um, spacing, padding, font size, and things like that. You can still make adjustments here. So now it's going to come down. Um, I can also change... Let's say I want this to be a lower third, and don't know if this is a good idea. Unfortunately, in Premiere Pro, you can't read the text, you can't resize the column headers. So that's a bit of a downer, because um, I don't know what it just, in After Effects, you can, obviously. Okay, so speaking about After Effects, Imran had this question about how to create HUD animation in AE. Is that something you want to address right now, or? Not really, um, it's, it's way beyond. Okay. Uh, our school. Um, but okay. yeah, hands are easy. Just Google um, HUD, all caps, and then After Effects, tutorials, templates, and you'll get more than enough links there. So I've also done tables and things like that. So you can do responsive and adaptive sports tables, um, infographics, charts, um, very, very highly uh, personalized, individualized videos where the text, the name um, changes dynamically based on, on the information that being fed from a spreadsheet. So yeah, so we don't have time to look at this, but this, this was actually quite fun and challenging to do. Um, last thing before I knock off, um, I've got a new text tool coming up and it's an, as you guess, it's an adaptive text animation tool. And it works with Premiere's auto reframe, which is pretty cool. So right now I'm in a composition, which is 4K. And let's say I'm done editing, client wants to output to IG or Instagram. I say, okay, and it's done. I need to change, uh, I need to use Premiere Pro's auto reframe feature. Right. Auto reframe, set it to 5.4. But you gotta be careful because this is our this is the already created. It's just automatically well, not automatically. It takes a few seconds, depending on the duration of your timeline. You've got to ensure that the frame size is one three five zero by ten eighty. Okay, come here. Go to your essential graphics panel and pick the correct frame size in this case once you find well by 1080 play it back and there's your animation so you did your editing in, in 4k did your text animations in 4k and then you come down it's a little issue here with the the um, <laughs> the borders, but everything works as you would expect in 4K and now in 5x4 or 1250 oh by 1080. Okay, I think it's 11.45. We were scheduling 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell you an hour, right? As long as, we, as long as we're under an hour, I will be happy. So... Mo and I at times can get going with questions with people and uh, it, it can run a little longer than that. And Miriam gets a little frosty. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe we, um, we can do the, the giveaway now, Miriam. Oh, yay. yay. Okay. <laughs> so I want to, we have actually multiple giveaways. Do you want to tell us about what it is that you're giving away though? Oh, it's, um, Essential mortgage pack. So it's got a tax animation tool. Um, good for you. Used in Premiere Pro. Um, it's got a couple of shape tools. And it's pretty cool. It's got speed. You can adjust speed. You can adjust transition out. When it transition out, transitions out. Uh, how fast it transitions in. 
when it transitions out and how fast it transitions out. And plus a lot of features like text highlighting um, and the shape tools and stuff like that. Um, I use it a lot. Um, if you do a lot of Google, editing for Google or, or corporate stuff, we love it because corporates love this kind of uh, text animation tools. It does the job. Okay. Beautifully and very quickly. And it, it, it's almost, it plays back in real time. Yeah. On a sufficiently performant very system in, in cool. Premiere Pro, so, drop the type your text, play, and then and boom, we'll start playing. All right. So I wanted want everyone that is watching right now to type um, hashtag GEMS. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen because that's uh, that is how we are going to do. I want to practice using this giveaway tool, but you have to type that into into the chat. So let's see if people will do that. Please type hashtag GEMS into the chat. Oh, yay. Thank you, Yarla. Thank you. Let's see. Anybody else? Well, Yarla's here, right? Eh? Oh, here we go, Muhammad. Thank you. Okay. I think Mo's at home trying I'm to, trying to be Earl just okay. Some people have typed in. Okay. Miriam? Yes. I think Mo's at home because he wants to participate in the, the giveaway. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. He didn't want to come on live. He wanted to do okay. Good. We've got some people that have signed up. So let's see if I can make this work. Yeah, there's there's some entries. Let's just okay. I've got to do this. A screen share though just a sec so i'm going to remove this <laughs> i needed to practice this i couldn't figure out how to practice this um until just now so we're going to try it D -d -d -d, yay share who is the winner who's the winner <gasps> Kruthi is the winner. Yay! Did you see that? Huh? I can't see anything. Yay! Sorry. It worked. Yay! Okay. So I will reach out to you on, um, probably on LinkedIn, so we can make sure you get the link to do that. I'm writing that down. Okay. So that worked. Yay! <laughs> Now, how do you want to do, um, okay, do you want to have, do you have any other special ways that you want to do the other giveaways? Or should we just say that we will randomly, everyone who has, who has uh, posted a comment uh, will get entered into the drawing and we'll just let them know afterwards? Yes, Imran needs, the, need, needs a giveaway for sure. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. He needs some more goods. And we have and we have some woohoo. Lots more <laughs> lots more free ones on Adobe stock too, yeah. What was that? There are lots more free mogets on Adobe stock, but they're pre basic, some good ones, some basic. I, I want people to start thinking about adaptive and responsive mortgage when they think about mortgage not just those simple basic mortgage which are very good also obviously but i would like us to also think about wow you know mortgage can can do all these things you know um, one mortgage can do the job of 10 15 non-responsive or non-adaptive uh, mortgage i want i want people to start thinking about building intelligent mortgage to solve real problems not just one mortgage just to, to type in one name and that's it you know Awesome. That is, that is very cool. So Ooh, I think that does it for, that does it for today. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah. Um, yeah be Thanks sure to ask questions. I can pass them. If you have a, a question that uh, comes up in your mind and you want that you want to ask Roland, I can pass it on to Roland. So you can just even comment those people that are watching the replay and other than that we are going to call it a day thank you everyone thanks take care guys cheers all right